Hey guys, it's Gia from Smart Home Makers. Today we're going to look at blueprint automations in Home Assistant. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a blueprint, how you can import an existing blueprint, and how do you create an automation from a blueprint. Let's get going. Before we get into it, I want to thank everyone, all of the new subscribers subscribing to the channel. I reached my goal of 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So that's awesome. So there's going to be a lot of videos coming up in this holiday season. IKEA versus little smart plugs. NFC tags and how to use them and many more but let's get into this video right now let's roll the intro if you don't know what home assistant is look down in the description below and find out more about it it's an awesome open source automation platform a blueprint is quite awesome because what you can do is you can create a template and then you can reuse that template for each automation you create so for example we have a motion light scenario, which is pretty standard in home automation. Every time a light go, a motion sensor is triggered, a light goes on. It's basically the same thing for each room and you can create a blueprint and now you can actually cut the time it takes you to build automations. Not only that, you can import blueprints from the community. So the first thing you need to do is, you need to have the right version of Home Assistant installed. You should go to the supervisor tab and check your system to see if it actually is at the latest version. I'm running 2020.12.6 for your own reference. You can actually see in the configuration tab, you'll have a new area called blueprints. And if you go in there, you'll have a, a two sample blueprints, the motion activated light and the zone notification blueprint. Your blueprints are stored in a configuration file under folder blueprints. And then there's a automation folder, home assistant. And here you can see those are the, these are the standard blueprints that were created and came when I upgraded Home Assistant. I didn't import them manually. So you can actually have a look at the YAML files of how these are created. But let's go about creating our own one and see how that works. So think of an automation that you normally use uh, and maybe you have the same pattern and same logic repeated multiple times and pick that for example. I'm going to use this automation over here which turns off the heating in a, in a room when there hasn't been any motion for, for example, an hour. Uh, for the purpose of the video, I'm only using one second, so it's easier to test if it works or not. So it's very simple automation, as you can see, a trigger of the motion sensor uh, from the state, we're looking at state off for one second or 60 minutes, and we're gonna use the climate.turn underscore off, and we're using a specific entity ID. It's a very simple example, this is just to get you to understand how to use blueprints, but you can do much more complex things as you can see in the, uh, from the tutorial. So pick this and let's move this, and uh, let's copy this and move it into the blueprint folder. So in the blueprints folder, click new file and I'm gonna call this heating.yaml. In the new file, you can paste in the code of the existing automation. You can save this. First thing to do is remove the alias completely because we don't need it. Now we're gonna add, need to add some code at the beginning before the trigger. Now copy these lines here from the tutorial and add them to the file and replace them with your own name and description for this project. In my example, I'm gonna be turning turn off heating. Important thing to note, you need your domain automation. Now this first part is done, let's move on to the next bit. Now we need to replace our entity IDs with input variables. So in this example here, they're using input motion sensor, which works perfectly fine for in our use case also. So let's go and replace the entity ID binary sensor and let's replace this with this exclamation mark input motion underscore sensor. Save this, now ignore the red uh, here. Uh, for some reason it's giving me an error, but it does work anyway. I'm not sure I need to look into why, but if you know, let me know in the comments down below. Okay, same thing we need to do for the action. So in the action, we need to replace that with another input. In this example, they're using target light, but we can change that to anything we want. So they're using target and we're gonna use entity ID in this example. So I'm keeping this entity ID here, just replacing this input, and I'm gonna call this 
target underscore client. And I'm gonna save this now. Let's move on to the next step. If you're getting value of this video, you can like and subscribe down below. I would much appreciate it. Now we need to add these two values as inputs at the beginning of the uh, automation. So as you can see here, very simple and straightforward. Go input, motion sensor target light, replace target light with the new name. So this would be target climate. Save that and that's good. So that's the bare minimum. And if you want at this stage where you can reload your automation and try it out, give it a go to see if it works or not. But I'm gonna take it a step forward now and start adding a few things to make this easier. I'm gonna add selectors in and some more descriptions. And descriptions are really useful, especially if you're planning to share this out with the community, which I really recommend you doing, because it will help people understand what, you, what uh, is sort of uh, the purpose of the sensors and inputs, but also will help you down the line if you don't remember what you actually did. It's very straightforward. Take name and description, and we need to put that under the input. So for each input, you can specify a name and a description. So you can go underneath here, two spaces, add a uh, name and description, and the same for the target climate, two spaces, and then you can add in the description. So I'm going to add in the description. Now we're going to add some selectors. So selectors are really useful because it allows you not to scan the whole list of entities, but only to scan things that are relevant to your automation. So if your automations are using only lights, switches, or climate, or whatever, you can sort of limit that down to only that. So it's going to be super fast to add and less error prone. First thing to do is to create these selectors. So right under the name and description, we could add a selector entity. And let's do that for the motion sensor first. So that will be binary underscore sensor device class motion. For the climate, we're gonna add the domain as climate. Save that and reload automations. Now let's go into the blueprint. So go to configurations, blueprints. And now you should be able to see your new blueprint, turn off heating, and the file name is heating.yaml. That's the file that we used ourselves. Home Assistant is just a folder before that. So you can create different subfolders as you wish. And now you've got this create automation button. So if you click create automation, you can go about actually creating the real automation for the real room. So if I have two rooms, I just need to go create automation twice. So if I say turn off heating in uh, room one and we got to pick a motion sensor so immediately as you've seen we we're only limited to motion sensors so you can pick any motion sensor that's the right one entities here we go we've got our three entities my thermostats all around the house so you can just pick one of them and you'll be uh, good to go click save and now this automation has been created in the automation.yaml file so you can go and verify that if you haven't had any errors. If you need any help to create your own smart home, check the link down in the description below for a one-to-one -one tailored session with me. Okay, so after rebooting, go back to your automations tab. Let's have a look and try this out. So to find your new automation, my one's turn off heating in room one. And let's execute and let's see what happens. So I've executed it and I'm gonna go to overview. And as you can see, I now have my bedroom thermostat on. Let's try that again. So I'm gonna turn it on manually from here. And I'm gonna to go to the configurations, automations, I'm going to execute it. If I go back to the overview, you see it turned off. So let's create another automation with the same blueprint, but for the inspiration room. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn it on, turn it on so you can actually see that uh, turning off. Let's go to the blueprints, so configurations, blueprints, uh, find turn off heating, click on create automation. So turn off heating in room two. Now we're going to use the inspiration motion sensor and the inspiration room thermostat. That was, that's it really. Just save this and let's go to our automations. So now we've got room one and room two, just to double check, going to overview, and uh, let's turn it back on. 
So it's all on and go to automations. Let's do a turn off heating room two and it triggered off. So that is how you can create a blueprint in Home Assistant. So now I'm gonna show you how you can import an existing blueprint from the community. So now I'm in the community forum and I've actually you can actually already see a lot of activity is already happening. You can see that the, uh, so this has been active for like 18 hours at this point and there's already uh, a lot of uh, blueprints ready for people to use. Uh, so let's pick a blueprint, let's pick. Okay, so I'm gonna use a Vorian's one and it's turn off phone charging after the phone is charged. So you can do that with uh, a smart plug or like a USB uh, device that can turn that off. And here we've got some a nice screenshot with an explanation, requirements of what you need. You need a, a switch and you need a battery level sensor for this to work. And here is the actual code of the whole blueprint. But what you actually need is just the URL. So you can use the URL of this page and uh, import it in. So just highlight it, copy it, go into Home Assistant, click on Import Blueprints, paste in the uh, URL. You can now preview the blueprint. So you can see it's going to inst install it in under the Uvorians folder. You can see the code. You can import the blueprint. And now you can see we have it right here. I can create automation. This is about rebooting, restarting without doing anything. I can, you know, give it a name and everything. And now I just need to look, find my smart plug. So I have, I don't know, let's try um, this one, kitchen switch. Right, and then you can just pick your battery level. So my iPhone 12 battery level and then you have a percentage you save and there you go. If you want to get rid of blueprints, not sure you would want to, but you can always delete in here. There's a button here to delete. I have other videos coming up around different type of topics. The next video you'll see from me will be the Lidl smart plug versus the IKEA smart plug and then the NFC tags and see if we can create some cool automations for that. I hope you have a great, great, great Christmas and I'll see you, see you soon.